So I just shot a series on how to make uh, a leather holster and I've been making these holsters for three or four years now and I wanted to share a few things to help you kind of speed up on the learning curve of making leather holsters. So this is one of my older 44 Magnum holsters uh, from one of my old 44 Magnum revolvers and as you can see it's not very pretty not at all it's the equivalent of a leather sock that's been riveted together with a little bit of thick sewing uh, put on it man i even know what type of cord i used on that i don't think it's anything to do with leather i just think i found some cord and sewed it on there and i put some buttons on it but again not very pretty and then the holster i just made is this one with the thumb brake and the buttons and the stitching and the, the fine craftsmanship and the nice work versus this old one. So how do you get there? How do you go from not making a piece of crud your first attempt like me and make a nice one? So what tools are you going to need? Okay, first off you're going to have to design the holster on paper, which I covered in my earlier episode. So you're going to need uh, a compass, and this is a cheap like compass I bought at the store, it's a kid's compass, uh, and a pencil. So that's like uh, two bucks, okay? First thing you're gonna need is design it. So once you've designed it and cut it out, you're gonna need to go down to your leather store and buy a chunk of leather, okay? Find a piece of leather that you can at least make two holsters out of so that if you mess up, you don't have to go back to the leather store and buy another chunk. Get the thicker, heavier grade leather, tell them you're making a holster, they'll, they'll steer you in the right direction. Okay. So I have these fancy leather tools that help me cut and shape the leather. To be honest with you, these tools are nice. They make it very easy and precise. But with an X-Acto knife, you cut the leather out with that. And then this part here that, that trims the edges off, that trims along the sides to cut a little groove, you just take the X-Acto knife and real carefully cut along, not too deep. You have to be real slow, but you can do the same thing with an X-Acto knife. This right here that, that scrapes the groove at a given distance, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is take a ruler, go along inside that distance, and make little marks where you want to uh, make your holes for sewing. This right here, once you make that groove, you just run it down, and the star shape on this device gives you evenly spaced uh, dents to make your holes. Well, you can use the ruler and like a nail to put the dents in it equal distance and make it look real nice. So uh, with a nail and a ruler, you can do the same thing as those three tools with an X-Acto knife and that all combined. Now, once you get your shape all cut out, you'll need to color it if you don't want it to be a natural color like this. This is what your leather holster will look like after a couple years of sweating on it with it tucked inside your waistband. So if you want to make it look nice like one of these, then what you have to do is you have to first dye the skin side, not the flesh side, but dye the skin side. And to do that, they sell these at the leather store, which are a little like, I don't know, they're for dye to put on. I found that this sponge works a whole lot better, and it's a whole lot cheaper to buy this little sponge uh, at any arts and crafts store or any paint place. Also, if you have a smaller piece or you need to do touch-up work, Q-tips work really well in place of the, uh, the, the other dye piece. If you don't get this one, get this one, but I find between the Q-tip and the sponge, I do a lot better work. Also, you're gonna want polish. You can get the wax-based polish, but I like the cream-based polish myself. This is uh, Meltonian, and it's cream-based and has conditioner inside it. So as you polish your leather, you're also softening it and letting it soak up the cream and the oils in it. Instead of just putting a wax on the top coat, this soaks in a lot better after you got it dyed with the dye. Again, go into your leather store and they'll have some type of dye. I like the nice oil dye. They make, uh, they make earth friendly dyes too. It's your choice. Since I'm putting this oil based stuff on a hunk of cow flesh, I don't particularly care that it's not environmentally friendly because the, the, it's not like I'm damaging the environment by a big chunk of leather I'm gonna wear for a while. <coughs> All right, once you get it cut out, before you stitch it, you're gonna to wanna to glue the pieces together along the seams you're gonna stitch. You can buy the leather type glue, or if you wanna save a little money, 
Uh, any type of strong adhesive will probably work just fine. So you can use super glue instead of leather glue to glue along your seams and to use clamps to hold it or uh, something else that will hold it in place while it dries. Okay, and then to actually make the holes, I have this nice little, what looks like a little ice pick designed to make holes in leather. And I've used nails in the past, but again, thanks to Ghost Town Custom Knives, I've now discovered that a Dremel with a tiny drill bit works far better. This Dremel drills sweet holes right through the leather. You want a piece of wood underneath, you drill the holes right through the leather. It makes beautiful short work of those holes. It makes life so much easier. A Dremel and a drill bit, a uh, small drill bit, I think this might be a 1 16th, it's the smallest one I had, uh, make perfect size holes to do your sewing. Now, the one thing you will have to do is get cord. I would suggest, and you can get this at Michael's, Joann's, any arts and crafts store or leather store, they're gonna have braided wax cord. Braided wax cord or artificial sinew is another option are what people usually sew leather with. They have high tensile strength. You can buy them in colors to match the leather. Uh, the wax on it helps it uh, uh, slide through and, and tie better and stay. Uh, I really enjoy the, the, braided the, the braided cord and the artificial sinew both. I've used both in my uh, projects and they work great. So it doesn't cost much. It's like $3 for, I don't know, however long this is. This is, uh, this is 25 yards for $3 or $4. So it's a lot of cord. You're not going to run out of it on a, a couple projects. Okay, they sell leather needles at those stores too along with the braided wax cord. Leather needles are fine, I've used them many times, but they are made out of a very brittle steel that will break if you use pliers to pull them through. If it gets stuck and you can't pull it through by hand, you'll grab a pair of needle nose pliers, pull it through, and you'll snap the needles in half periodically doing that. <clears throat> I found these things called yarn darners. They're just big, strong needles. They're made out of a stronger steel. I haven't broken one yet, knock on wood. Uh, but I've used them just as hard as I've used the other ones that I've broken many on and the yarn darners are holding up great and they don't cost much. You can get them at any sewing store. Uh, yarn darners, they're just big needles. Uh, lastly, one of the things you may want to invest in is a leather punch. Again, with the Dremel and, and a nice drill bit, you can probably do the same thing as the leather punch, but the leather punch really helps when you're making belts and speeds up the process. I think they cost about 10 or $15. Uh, I punch holes in things with this leather punch all the time, so uh, it's worth it for me, but if you're only planning on making like one, you know, if you're testing it, you're like, I don't know if I really want to get all this money invested in it, because again, these, all my leather working tools probably run me over $100, so if, if I can basically get you to go out and use the stuff in your own house already that you already possess, and only have to go out and spend $20 to $30 to get the other stuff, then once you make your first holster, you've basically paid for the price of that first holster. The second holster you make out of the same leather and the same equipment is then free. You've broken even more so then because you got a nice holster. I look, and to buy a holster like this from Cabela's and a belt to go with it is $60 for the belt and the holster. And it cost me, uh, cost of leather and a few of the other items to put into it, this is a $5 holster. That's what it ran me in leather and the other products I had to put into it. So, again, not counting the tools which I already paid for, this is a $5 holster and another $5 belt. Instead of paying $60 for a holster and belt and it's custom, it's just the way I like it. So, again, uh, some of the items that you'll need for leather crafting, a lot of them you can find in your home or at your local craft store. And they don't really cost that much if you go this way. Now, if you go down to the leather store and say, I want to make a holster, show me everything you want, you'll walk out having spent a hundred bucks because they're going to take you in there and say, you need this tool. You need this tool for that. You need this tool for that. You need this tool for that. Well, guess what? A Dremel, some super glue, uh, a sponge uh, brush, uh, and a ruler and a, a nail, you can pretty much do the same thing. And, oh, don't forget the X-Acto knife. And you pretty much got most of your tools already taken care of. So, hope this helps y'all. Uh, please, uh, if you're interested in making leather holsters, this stuff is, is a lot of fun to do. Uh, it is time consuming, it takes practice, but again, uh, these tools and watch the earlier videos and give it a try. It's really not that hard if you take your time and are patient. And uh, as always, have a good one and happy crafting.
Mimip. 